a little bit more I should keep that on there and measure it really but I just want to I'll take a little bit more before I do that uh, that's very close to there okay we're close there we're already there with that so what I'm going to do now is take something that's going to smooth it a little bit more for me you obviously wouldn't reach over a lathe like this if it was a power lathe now this lathe I'm okay there's nothing really to catch me and nothing to do any real damage and all it's going to do is slide on here anyway so oh anybody writing in and saying what you're doing is damn dangerous man you know so that's, uh, there's no need for that really so, anyway okay let's put that down here so what this will do is I'll just square it off nicely I'll just sharpen this up nicely so it's got a lovely little burr on the end there scrapers were commonly used in the 17th century so uh, gives a nice little effect as well you can of course skew it you know make it nice and uh, nice and smooth on there as well I'm just going to lift that up a little bit more actually it's always nice to have your scraper pointing as far down as you possibly can really ok when you start to get those nice fine little cuts off there yep, you know that you're getting almost a sanding type um, touch on it now that gouge that I showed you before gauge sorry that, those calipers that I showed you before they were um, they were set to 22 well actually to 23 I believe the measurements that I was going down to was about 21 or so I can't remember now but anyway it's a good millimetre more than I actually need it to be so that any sort of fine cuts that I'm going to take by this you know, are not going to send me beyond where I need it to be the thing is the lid is going to get quite um, Thin here, isn't it? So I'll just speed that up a little bit. Yeah, spinning around there. Just so I'm getting a nice sanding on that. Okay, now I can still see a line on there, but I'm just going to see what it looks like um, when it's not spinning. Just to see if that line is still there. If it is, I might just skew that down actually, just to sort of skim that little bit off. Just have a close look at that. You see, when it's going around like that, you can hardly notice that. But it has roughed it up a fair bit, that. So I, I think I'll just smarten that up a bit, actually, rather than... I thought that would have been fine without, but no, I think I'm going to have to skew just a little bit on the top of there. So I'm just going to skew down there just to smooth it out there, that one. OK, we need to do the lid top, of course. You know, that, that just that lip along the top there. That's another thing to do. But anyway, we'll just um, touch the top of there. That's uh, catching there, isn't it? And I think maybe I should have paid a little bit of attention to the skew as well, really. Okay, just take that down there into the corner. Just um, what you want to do is, I don't know if you've um, seen any videos or anything, or had any instruction on using the skew. But what you want to do is catch it, say, just so it's skimming over the surface. Put your skew on top of the piece of work if you can. I know what you want to. I think this needs sharpening, to be honest with you. I don't think I sharpened this one, but it just catch it so that it's see just in that lower quarter of the. Um, of the blade and then just run that smoothly along there pressing down on the top there like that okay taking a little bit off there because I just want to square that corner a little bit so that should be a bit smooth I'm just going to stop that now just have a bit of a look at that see what that's like now I think it's sort of approaching what I want it to be it's just like see I've got a bit of a what I call a dork in there you know just that little bit of a catch oops um, camera's in my own way now so look at that Right, you can just a little bit there, just on there, that I need to take away there. I'm going to try my skew from the other side just to see if I can take that. I think it was catching on the edge there when it went round. So let's just um, see if I can take that little bit off there. You never know. My skew might be sharper this side as well, I see. Probably use it more the other way around. Okay, so just take this round here. Just take that last little bit off there. I don't want to take too much off because I want it to fit nice and level with the uh, edge of the bottle as well when that's done so yeah it just seems to be going a little bit smoother on this side so I suspect that means that my skew is not as sharp as I thought it was so, um, I think I'm happy now let's just have a look see if that's come off there now should do plenty of room to turn more lids of course here but there's still that little bit on there and I'm wondering how much I'm going to take off if I lose that I might just have to Pay a little bit more attention to that. Just uh, like I said, I don't want to go down too thin. That's the thing, because it's going to fit into the, the bottle. Just take that down there. Oh, 
I haven't started the video running, I might have thought, oh, well, blow it. It's gone too low, that, so let's just do another one. Sorry, I've only spent about five minutes on this. No, no great time. So, but I started. So I'll finish. So I'll look there now. I think I'm probably about it now. Yeah? I think that's probably enough anyway to take from there. So what I'll do now is I'll just take this lid down. I want to take that down to 32. Just keep this spinning round while I just slip over and get my other caliper that's been set. So, right, okay. <laughs> oh, amazing, isn't it? How much inertia there is in this wheel that it keeps going like that. Okay, so, right, uh, where am I? Parting chisel. Again, obviously you won't want to reach over like that. If this is a power lathe, no worries with this one. As I said before, so be care for your health and safety. Right. I think. A few uh, engineers out there will have noticed that there's a bit of banging going on down at the bottom here. And that's because the um, lathe has become a little bit wobbly, a little bit unsteady, and um, it's rubbing ever so slightly. You know, the spindle is rubbing ever so slightly, causing that. Right, now I noticed for some reason that my. Um, I noticed that my scraper was uh, not doing a very good job last time, so I'm going to go straight in with the skew this time on this, you know, just to smooth that down. I don't have to worry too much about this, because there's hardly any of this that will be seen on the final piece of work, to be quite honest. Let's just take that a little bit higher, actually. Okay, you want to be sort of skimming over the top. In fact, Moxon doesn't talk about using a modern skew like this at all. Moxon actually talks about using a knife. You see where that catches it? Just a little bit there at the end there. I think it's a little bit. It's a little bit blunter than I want this to be. Anyhow. Okay. <laughs> you see, I'm so nervous about it now. I'm not even touching the thing. Let's come around a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Okay, that should be a nice smooth finish now. Now let's just have a look at that. And I hope that that catch hasn't sort of made a mark in there like it did on the bottom of the top there. The bottom of the top he talked about now. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that because um, when this all gets cut down, you know, to shape of the lid and everything, I think that will be absolutely fine. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. So it's a little bit of a rub on there I'm not happy with, but hmm. Well, I'll just take that down. Uh, some of these get painted, by the way, so the paint will easily hide that. And it's certainly a heck of a lot better quality than the ones that you see in the Leeds Armouries. So what I'm going to do now is just part down that little bit more there, take off the lid, and that's my lid done then, so I can then fix that um, to the bottle when I've done the bottle in a similar manner. But I will show you the, um, uh, the hollowing out of the bottle, because that's an important part of the process. And it's a way, I think, it would have been done at the time. So let's just take this down. A little bit of the way. Like I said, most of this was done with a saw anyway. Now I noticed that a little bit of wobble on there, so I'm going to do my own steady. I say my own steady. Put my hand at the back there just to prevent that bit of wobble. Really, I think I'm being a bit overconfident here, and having people watch me has made me sort of a bit more, um, a bit more careful than I normally would be. So I think that um, I would have really brought up that. Sorry, a bit less careful really. I would have brought that. Uh, tailstock up and put a bung in there just to make that a little bit easier for me for myself there so okay almost there oh blow it i'm nearly there i'm going to take it off now okay that should be coming any minute that now come on boy come on here we go come to daddy oops there we go and i'll just uh just take that nib off there just take that off there, okay? There's a bit of roughness on there, on the end of that there, but I can take that away, like I said, with this. It's just like the ones at Leeds Armouries, by the way, this, um, except theirs would have been sawn at the end there. So, you know, I'm just taking this round with a knife, but um, I've got a file as well, and I will just file down the top. So when I cut off the sides of this, you know, because when I get that nice sort of 
shape in there that I'm going to get with the holes in there, I can just sort of file the top of that off as well there, can't I? So that's my completed lid. And you see there's a bit of a nib in there as well, which is exactly like the ones that you saw at Leeds Armouries. I could have left a longer nib in there, which they did do, but, you know, it's easy. You just put your skew chisel into the left there and you dig in from there instead of from the centre. It's just I prefer to drive it in from the centre. Oh, apparently I said spindle. I said uh, skew chisel again, haven't I? But uh, no, it's a spindle gouge. There's a little bit of a knot there. I think that's going to be okay. I think when I put that in, um, you know, in, in some, uh, you know, in, in the in the oil that I dip it in three times at the end of it, that will be absolutely fine. So that's my that's my lid completed. Normally I'd turn my bottle out of this bit here, but the screw that he's made for me is just a little bit too long for the pieces that I've had cut ready for doing all these. I've got I've got hundreds of these ready to use. You see, and they're all slightly too short for that um, screw that he's put in there for me. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do now is uh, remove this. And you've already seen how this is done. So I'm going to take this out of here. I'm going to put the other one in here. That's this one here. Mark it up and then we'll work from there. So I'll come back in the video and show you what I'm doing then. I'll also pop a little bit more oil in here as well, you know, just to help it along. Here we go. I'm um, preparing to do the bottle part. Um, I've done the same thing as I did with the, um, the tops, um, only I've fitted in a slightly smaller piece. Actually, I found a slightly smaller piece. So I've got that one in there. What we're going to do is the um, boring out of this one here, and then we're going to do the hollowing of this one here as well. But before I do that, I'm going to find a nice centre on that, because you can see here on a smaller bit that I've found here, um, I've got uh, just a little bit of a nib sticking out there that might affect how my uh, detailed gouge goes in there, or my spindle gouge. Not that I keep calling this skew by mistake. Okay, so get that spinning a bit. I'll put a bit more oil in there, so um, it should be okay. Let's just give it a bit of... Okay, just take out a little bit of a hole there, just so that I've got something that I can get my spindle gouge into. I want an 11mm hole in there that's going to go down 4 inches. Take that down there. Okay. I think that should just about do it. That's probably enough. Uh, I'll just get rid of the skew. I've just moved the um, the lathe. That's why I'm going over to somewhere else to put some of my tools away. I haven't got my tool rack here either. I've just put it in a box, as you can see over there. So. Um, uh, so there's a bit of fiddling about getting to the right place and that's why we've got that sort of banging as well on the on the wheel there It's not quite as stable as I would like it to be So um, uh, we should be able to get rid of that banging soon Now that was my marker this one on here for going into the uh, Into the lid. I've left that on there. I'm going to drop that down a little bit Okay, so I can go centrally into there and oof, that's a little bit low Bit of an exact science this isn't it? Um, Oh, still a bit low. <laughs> got to go right into the middle of that. Otherwise, I'm going to make a hole bigger than I actually want it to be. I think that's about central, that, isn't it? So I'm going to go for that. I wonder if I can peel this off, because it's going to get in my way here now. So just uh, take that away. A uh, bit of luck and get rid of that. Uh, okay. So normally, I wouldn't measure this. I'm just giving you an idea how to measure. I'd normally take time and use the uh, the vernier calipers to find out how far I'd gone down but on this occasion I thought if I had it marked with a bit of tape you'd be able to see it and I'd be able to see it without stopping and checking with the verniers all the time so that was the idea of that. I'll leave this one on for the same reason so I'm not continually checking. Okay so the idea now is to bore down that hole there or rather turn as in the instruction we were talking about before. Okay so I need a bit of pressure on this one because as you noticed before it struggled to go in. We are turning beach here, and this is a particularly hard wood to get into, so I am putting quite a bit of pressure on that. And of course, when you put pressure on there like that, you're also um, putting a lot of heat on that uh, on that tool. So I'll just pull that out there for a moment. I feel like as I'm brushing it off, to clearing away the waste, I can feel how hot that's getting. Uh, the reason why I think this is the way that this is done is because when you look inside the, uh, the bottles, or when we did at the Leeds Armouries, you could see a kind of sort of spirally sort of groovy sort of um, effect on the inside of the bottles there. I suspect that is the uh, spindle gouge being removed as the neck is sort of like opened out just a little bit or whatever. Anyhow, we'll see what the effect is at the end of the day, or you'll see rather. I've seen it before.